Hey guys, this is Nazgul. Here are the main reasons why you are not successful in aerial refueling. First, you don't train to fly in formation. Second, chase the basket. Third, don't create reference points. Fourth, don't relax. And fifth, think it's easy to do Revo. So don't train in formation, chase the basket, don't create references, and don't relax. First, you must practice flying in formation with the tanker. When asked to refuel, the tanker will inform you of its altitude and speed. To reach it, put on about 100 knots more speed. Being between 1.5 and 1 mile, decrease and feel if you are getting closer or further away. As a rule, aircraft that are going to refuel must wait on the left side of the tanker. Arriving at the tanker's side, start making small adjustments to the speed to try to find out what its real speed is. In this mission, notice that when we are at 324, 325 knots, we start to move forward. Slowing down to 321, 320 knots, we began to pull away. So, it should be around 322 and 323 knots. When you are stable, can let it know that you are ready for contact. Here comes another of the biggest mistakes, trying to chase the basket. Don't do this. To correct this error, you must also correct the third error, which is not creating reference points. Create references to the front and side. At the front, you can use the HUD and wing points together. Most commonly, we try to keep the wing refueling equipment in the upper right part of our HUD. Try to maintain this reference. Then, increase one or two knots and move forward. Don't chase the basket. If you don't hit it, slow down. Return to the starting point. Stabilize and move forward again. Repeat as many times as necessary to hit the basket, but don't chase it. When connecting to the probe, use the stripe on the tanker's hook as a reference.
If you start to see the stripe in front of the canopy arch, speed up a little. If you see that this stripe is behind, slow down a little. Contact. You're taking fuel. Even at 322 knots, keep eyes on these references making small millimetric adjustments to the throttle. Now, keep your eyes on the HUD reference and the side reference. How can you do this? My tip is not to move your head, but only with your eyes and peripheral vision. When you move your head, you lose visual references and destabilize the flight. Using only the lateral movement of the eyes, you don't lose references and are able to look to the side more quickly as the ease move faster than the heat. Additionally, the hood will always be in front of you. The front reference is the most important. Therefore, it is important not to lose sight of it. You follow the side reference little by little, giving small glances from the corners of your eyes. At this moment, you make the fourth mistake which is not relaxing. You begin to feel tense and dizzy because you are not breathing. When you notice this, try breathing slowly, relaxing your hands, and blinking a few times to rehydrate your eyes. This way, you will be able to gain more conditioning and more attention again. This is Revo, several things happening at the same time that require very careful and short movements. Is easy? Of course not. Most people don't succeed or give up because they underestimate it or think it's easy to do, fifth mistake. In this refueling, we have the aggravating factor, which is having the Viking as a tanker. Refueling with it is more difficult because its probe has the smallest hose it's easy for us to disconnect from it if we fall just a little short or a little behind. With the KC-130 or KC-135, it is easier to refuel because we have a larger tolerance region where we can refuel due to their larger hoses. Finally, being able to do Revo is training. The more you train, the easier it will be. It is certain that when you manage to do it, you will have one of the coolest experiences in DCS. Since the time when the DCS was not called DCS, but only lock on, doing Revo with the Su-33 was already exciting. Today, it is extraordinary. So don't give up. Good flights and enjoy. See ya.